Hi, Genki Call here with your campaign tasks. What you can get with your event keys this week and upcoming events for the week of February 13th, 2023. <sighs> Alright, let's start with the campaign tasks. I've done a few of them here already. And let me just bring you over here and show you what they are. For gold, we have use the Divinion banner for 15 wins. Divinion would be Divinion Fields. Use a Divinion Fields team for 15 wins as well. For silver, win five battles in a single arena run. Craft two yellow summoning stones. Explore Divinion Fields twice at difficulty 3 plus And complete two treasure hunts with 60 plus turns. By the way, I did this and I failed the first two times, but... I probably got about 12 gems out of those four those four events that are those four treasure hunts I did. I was shocked. I was getting a minimum of two gems every time and up to five. So maybe they buffed it a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, bronze tasks. Open two event chests, get seven centaur wins, get 10 yellow kills, kill high king iron gut one time. I have put him on my D PvP defense team to make it easier to find him. Match 60 purple gems in battle, win 3 ranked PvP battles, use a staff weapon for 3 wins, complete 1 adventure board, earn 4 glory in battle, and use the oracle class for 3 wins. Now just a note here, um, for finding High King Iron Gut, if you decide to do it in PvP, you don't have to do the ranked PvP. If you don't like ranked, just do it in the casual. Um, of course this has to be ranked, but also for the glory, you need to do that in PvP, and it can also be casual issue, if you wish. Alright, coming up next, we are in Divinion Fields, and here's what you can get with your event keys this week. Let me show you, let's show all, I think I have all the things, but I'm not positive. Alright, we have three mythics here uh, at Divinion Fields, and the first is Astral Mother, remove all gems of a chosen color, do true scatter damage boosted by the gems removed. Each gem you remove is worth five extra uh, scatter damage. And how is she really? Hmm. She's not as good as Queen Beatrix, in my opinion. However, if the enemy team is fairy-fired or if you get a magic boost on her, she's going to be a lot more useful. But overall, she's okay. I like her artwork. I can say that much. And she does give, uh, has a 40% chance to give Reflect to a random ally at the start of every turn. It's not based upon match fours. It's just 40% straight up. And... You can die from attacking something that is um, that has Reflect on it, but overall, it's not a huge status effect, so um, Astral Mother, she's okay, but better than Sagittarian, in my opinion. So he does more true damage to an enemy, then steals either 10 magic, 20 life, or 20 armor from the enemy, and this looks a lot better in some ways. It's one enemy more damage and if you steal magic even more damage but that's it that's the thing i hate either or troops in general there are a couple that i like but most of them if you don't know what they're going to do i don't like it i like to be able to plan ahead what i'm going to do and that is why i like astral mother a bit more than sagittarian he does give two magic to all yellow allies when matching yellow gems so if you have a fully yellow team he could be very useful if it's going to be a long battle. Say if you had him on the team with something that loops with yellow um, and is heavily magic based, then this could be helpful. He also starts the battle with a light storm. The World Breaker is. I like the World Breaker. He explodes 18 gems on the board, just 18 random gems, and does damage to all enemies. You put him in a delve, he's a lot more useful, because this isn't a ton of damage, but he does explode a bunch of things, damage to all enemies, but he does gain uh, 5 to a random skill on 4 plus gem matches, and he have, does have skull reflect, and uh, immunity to devour, so you have to curse and or stun curse or stun him before he can be devoured <clears throat> next up is artema i love this troop actually i think she's a little bit of an unsung hero as far as legendaries go the thing is she only hits two enemies and you can't decide which ones they're just going to be the weakest enemies uh, boosted by ally centaurs so you can get an additional up to 20 damage to two enemies 
that's that's a lot actually so 67 damage to two enemies that's over for me is over um it's over 120 damage that's a lot that that's that's more than sagittarium of course he's doing true damage but anyway also she has 50 percent chance to ignore armor with skull damage like lord of slaughter his is 100 percent hers is 50 percent chance to do true damage and 40% chance to dodge skull damage. That is really high. So between these two, and plus she gains three to all skills if she's in the first position. She's she's a fairly good uh, legendary. I do like her a lot. And if you need to use centaurs, she's a great one to use. Next up is Oneros. He fairy fires. Ooh. He drains mana from all enemies and inflicts fairy fire and burns them. Um, the Fairy Fire is going to make all spells do an additional 50% damage, and of course, the Burn, well, you know, with Burn, there are troops that do extra skull damage or and or extra spell damage to burning troops, and of course, if you have some of the, um, the traits maxed out that have the triple skulls on burning enemies of course this is going to be very useful for that as well so you could technically do a combo of skull and spell with this um with this troop on a team he also eliminates one magic from all enemies when an ally casts a spell and um he can create wild cards which you know the wild cards can be very useful they may not be but they could be next is orion now orion has a 75 percent chance to ignore skull damage or armor with skull damage that's true damage with skulls this is the highest percentage of possibility to do true damage with skulls except for the mythic which is the lord of slaughter so that's very nice he has no skull damage reduction but he also does a range of damage but he hunters marks as well so if they're hunters marked you hit him with skulls you're going to do a ton of extra damage so He's not bad. He's not amazing. I like him enough, but I ha hardly ever use him. Ori, I love the troops that do the dual storms. The dual storms are more powerful, in my opinion, than a regular storm. A star storm is, you can tell right here, purple and yellow. So you have a purple and yellow storm starting at the start of every turn that makes it fantastic to run with evendra and anything that's heavily yellow and purple you don't even bother with this skull uh his spell unless they're almost dead but this is a really low amount of damage but that star storm is great impervious is also very good really like this legendary next up is the wendigo you will not be able to get it you look right here it says wild court um none of the wild court troops are in the drop table you have to get them in the underworld from wild court so we're going to skip him next up is anthea she creates 15 yellow and green gems and dispels all enemies dispel means that if they have any positive positive status effects anything at all including bless she's going to remove all of those positive status effects it's just like getting them all cursed basically so yeah it dispels everything we like that and the air link is fantastic bonus yellow mana from yellow gem matches she's a you know yellow and green great and uh she has a chance to dodge skull damage she's actually quite a good troop atlanta you will have this troop if you've done the storyline here at divinion field she's the one you get at the end of the story uh damage to all enemies actually really like this troop this is not a ton of of damage it's uh, your whatever your magic is plus two however you put her in a delve for a quick delve makes things nice and fast she does have a 50 percent chance to ignore armor with skull damage so we have another one here that can do true damage with skulls and again with the air link super nice and she does double skull damage versus centaurs so you have double sk skull damage you have a 50 percent chance for that skull damage to do true damage you add Hunter's Mark on top of that, and she will cream your enemies with skulls if they're centaurs. All right, Auspicia. I remember her. Give life to an ally, then remove all blue, red, and brown gems from the board. You will not get any mana out of it, but you'll uh, deny those three colors to your enemy, and that means you're going to have a ton of the other colors. You tend to loop with this, um, with this troop, and... 
yeah, she's pretty good in the right situation. If you can find the right team to put her on, I have not taken the time to come up with the perfect team for her. I will try to do that at some point if I can remember. Ah, all right. And um, yeah, nothing really special here in her traits. Next up, we have Bull Tauros. He does scatter damage boosted by his life. So I have 128 life. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it'll be my life, whatever it is, plus this is the scatter damage. It's not bad, especially if you can boost the life. Um, and if he, you know, loses some life along the way, he gets it back at the start of each turn. One life back. <sighs> Next is Centurigon. You must have this troop. If you do not have Centurigon yet, I highly, highly recommend spending your event keys to try and get this guy. He is fan Hustic. Now, unless you don't like this mode of play, I believe I did a spotlight on Centurigon, or at least have some videos with him in it showcasing how he can be used. I will add that at the end of this video on some pop-up thumbnails. They'll show up in the last 15 seconds of the video. I'm talking too much. <laughs> There's a 10% chance to devour a random enemy. You can't count on that, but it's awfully nice when it happens. Plus 10% for each wild card. Then convert all skulls to 2x wild cards. You're going to get loop. You're going to loop and loop and loop. If there are skulls on the board, it's very likely that you're going to loop. And every time you loop, you have another chance to devour. And this is for every wild card, you get an extra 10% chance to, to devour. So he's very, very good. He reflects skull damage. He has a 25% chance to create a, a two times wild card when matching four plus gems, and he summons a dark storm when an ally dies. You know, I didn't actually know about this. I don't, <laughs> I don't tend to lose my troops when I'm running with Centurigon because I'm usually using uh, Zulgoth. So, uh, next up, the new troop, Ch Chiron, Chiron, my Chiron. Best Bugatti ever. I do not un understand the reference. Maybe someone, somebody tell me in the comments what this is about. Sharon. Sharon? Mm. Uh, create eight yellow gems and eight spirit gems. Those are blue gems. If there's a lot of blue on the board, you have a chance to drain all of their mana. He enchants himself and also uh, reduce damage from spells. Oh, the air link. Bonus yellow mana from yellow gem matches. It feeds right back into himself. He enchants himself. He creates yellow gems. You know, he has some good synergy with himself, and I like that a lot. But this is our glory troop. I'll show you how to get it in just a bit, as soon as we're finished here. Hern or Herney? Herney. Rumor has it he had a wild stag party. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, this is our siege breaker. This is for fighting towers, including... Leonis Tower. He's going to do that three to five times damage based on his ascensions. That just means at base rarity, he'll do the three times damage. At legendary, he'll do four times. And if you have a, him ascended to mythic like I do, he'll do that five times damage to towers. Um, and he does the damage plus destroys a random row. But So he's mostly good for fighting Leonis Tower or taking into it a tower event and uh, kind of need to take him into the tower event usually. Um, if there's one going on. But anyway, well, for Divinium Fields. I'm a little tired. I'm a lot tired, so forgive me for babbling. Next up is Nightwing. This one is our God Slayer. He does three to five times damage, just like um, the Siege Breaker, but this is to any of the boss troops. Now, the boss troops are anything with a red border that's in the dungeon, that's Zulgoth, that's Enraged Kurandara, that's all of the gem dragons. You can do this three to five times damage. It'll also create eight yellow gems and, and eight purple gems, and it is one of those troops that is a summons, one of the troops summons night wings. And um, it's stealthy as well, so you can't target it and just kill it. <sighs> Ragnagord. Ragnagord is quite a good mana generator, in my opinion. He's only um, an epic rarity, and he explodes your magic plus two of whatever color you want. And um, he's 50% start on, on the mana, so he's only going to take seven mana to get started as long as you have him traded. And he gains one magic for read one magic for each red ally. If I could speak, that would be great. And he's one of them. So right off the bat, you're going to get plus one magic. And yeah, that's cool. 
You will not be able to get the Wild Knight. He's from Wild Court. Astral Spirit is next. She is empowered. She starts battles with full mana. She removes all gems of a chosen color, making her really good to use on your attack teams on yellow or yellow or blue Guild Wars attack team. They the yellow. Backing up, yellow or blue attack day on gems of Guild Wars. Good God. <sighs> All right, you don't get any mana from it, but you re you remove whatever color that is so that your enemy can't start looping with those empowered mana generators. You do some true damage to the first enemy, boosted by the gems removed. It is a 3 to 1 ratio, so it's not a ton, but because she's empowered, you can stop the enemy team from looping very quickly. Hopefully. Doesn't always work out, but... Anyway, she's very good for Guild Wars. Guardians of the Fields gives armor to an ally, barriers all allies below whatever one you choose so if you hit the top troop they'll get armor and then everything below them gets a barrier if you hit the bottom troop you only get the armor so 50 percent mana start and skull damage reduction so he's good to run at the front of the team uh, 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 uh plus he can you know armor himself up so Herdmaster is another really good mana generator if you're using a lot of yellows. Not only is he going to explode all of the yellow, well, well, not all of them, but he's going to explode yellow gems. He's also going to cleanse the team, and that means that any negative status effects you have will be gone. Any of them, including stun. Even if he's stunned, it doesn't matter. This cleanses the whole team. It's a spell, not a trait. Plus yellow mana again, plus three to all skills of the first uh, if he's in the first position. Horse Lord does damage to the last enemy and stuns them. Then he pulls them up to the front of the team so you can finish them off with skulls. He does have a chance to dodge skull damage and he's 50% mana empowered. Next up we have Puka who's not available. She's uh, from Wild Court. Pegasus removes all yellow gems. Deny those to your enemy. Deals damage to the last enemy, boosted by the gems removed. It's a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning if there are 10 yellow gems on the board, you'll do an additional 5 damage. She's 50% um, mana empowered and immune to entangle, so nice to run at the front of the team if you're fighting something that entangles up there. And, you know, gets a little extra magic every time an ally casts a spell. The Plains Jumper destroys 8 gems, so it's it's going to take them off the board as if they were matched, but they are random gems. You never know what you're going to get. Then deals damage to the first enemy. 75% mana empowered. It's a bounty It's a bounty troop, but this is not one I generally would think about using because, you know, I have a certain way I like to do things. Uh, it does have some a chance to dodge skull damage. Can't get the red cap because Wild Court. Stargazer removes all blue gems, gives attack to an ally boosted by gems removed. It's a 4 to 1 ratio, so if you, well I'd say 10, if there, if you remove 10 gems you'll get plus 2 or maybe plus 3 attack. Um, because it's 2.5 would be divided by 4, so. Uh, anyway, she is also empowered, so... You know, if you're fighting in Guild Wars and there's a team that is using heavily blue, you could use her to remove that blue um, for Guild Wars. Eh, Thaumatur deals damage to all purple enemies only, then drains 1-3 to three mana from them. She is immune to mana drain herself, which means that those new spirit gems won't do anything to her unless she's stunned or cursed. And a couple other little things here. Three more, folks. <sighs> Centaur Scout. Destroy a row and deal damage to the first enemy. That's it. He is 50% mana um, empowered and has a chance to dodge skull damage. The Moa does uh, damage to an enemy and stuns them. And also inflicts stun when doing skull damage. So if you're fighting something that does bonus damage to yellow... Um, yellow enemies or um, it like the web spinner who's going to web you and th then do triple damage with skulls you can stun them so they can't do that and also 50% mana start um, start on there then we have Orion's Herald he has a 16 mana cost for a common 
but he's going to summon Orion and give all allies life and has the air link chance to dodge skull damage. Now the summons is only going to work if there's a spot open for him and if you're low enough level that you're depending on that troop then um, when you summon Orion he's not going to have any of these traits. So you have to own the troop that you summon and get it traded in order for it to have traits when you summon it. So, next up, hold on just a second. Okay, I'm tired, I'm talking too much. Um, next up, let's head into the shop. Grab your resources, spoils of war, get all 10 of these if you can. It's a fantastic deal for 10 event keys, plus you get these other resources as well. So grab that. Get those extra keys every event key is a possibility of getting a mythic and then head into weekly event and grab the new troop sharon my sharona sharona <laughs> i will get this up to uh mythic level because um, it's a guaranteed level 20 troop that you can have when you need it for your power level i'm all about increasing the power levels on my kingdoms because the higher your power levels are the more powerful your troops become the higher your um, attack is going to be the higher your armor the higher your health and the higher your magic depending upon the kingdom so this is how i have such high stats because i have all of my kingdoms as high as they will go on power levels and kingdom levels as well so yes we want to get this mythic level and you get all of these other beautiful uh, resources as well if you're low level you need the like the um the trait stones and you don't have to grind for them this way so it's a fantastic deal and highly recommend getting it maxed out every week if you can so as far as events this week uh, uh, uh let's see Right. Okay, so centaurs get plus 10% to their skills, and mystics also get 10% to their skills. So a centaur mystic will get plus 20%. Of course, they do stack. And then Sharon in Explorer gains you an extra 40 souls per battle. Lastly, let's head into the games. Oh, I have the small packa up right now. Um, for this week, on Tuesday, we have the Wild Court faction assault then wednesday you can't see it because i have a pet rescue right now but it will be a new um it'll be a valentine's day pet it looks like a box of chocolates and then on thursday we have where is it class trial the oracle class trial and for the weekend for the weekend apparently we're going to have arena again so we'll see that is what was talked about on the forum we got to have um a vault weekend this this last weekend then arena this weekend but it is showing another vault event on the weekend after that so it only be two weeks between vault events if taran's world is right so there have been some updates on taran's world it shows the names of some of the new vulpacia troops vulpacia we're going to next week Unless I've missed, is it next week or the week after? Anyway, we're going to have our new kingdom soon. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more as soon as I can. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Bye.